Hello and welcome to Drive and Double Feature Podcast. I'm Nathan. I'm Ryan. And this is the podcast where we talk about two movies a week every Tuesday and Thursday. But before we get into today's episode, be sure to check out our Patreon over at patreon.com slash drive and double feature podcast. We have so much bonus content over there. We are just full of it, full of it. We got we're talking Oscars. If you're still interested in talking Oscars, I think that's my favorite time to talk about it, like two months after it happened. Um, So, yeah, check that out. But moving into today, this Tuesday, we are doing a recommendation. We are talking about 2001's Rockstar. Yeah, this one was recommended by my dad. Um, So, hey, there we go. You know, that's the perks. But also, if you want to recommend us something, be sure to email us at drivingdoublefeaturepodcast at gmail.com. We would love to take them. But Ryan... What's your experience with Rockstar? I know, <laughs> very popular movie. I remember when it came out. Okay, okay. I remember seeing the poster. Mm-hmm. It's a very uh, recognizable poster of Mark Wahlberg, like, walking into well, the frame. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, did this movie come out around your birth? Actually, <laughs> this movie came out your birthday weekend, September 7th, 2001. Oh, man, what a week. Why, did you, was, why uh, didn't you go uh, see it? <laughs> Uh, it was rated R. Oh yeah, you're right. It was. It is a rated R movie. Um, but yeah, Rockstar. I don't remember this coming out. It was just kind of like ended up in our household on DVD. I don't know how my dad watched it. I mean, I guess Were you I, like five. You don't remember when this came out. You don't remember what being I was. Five I, I would have been. I would have been six. So, um, so yeah, you know. I don't remember this coming out, uh, but I remember my dad loving this movie at some point. This constantly was playing in our household. This movie, <laughs> I feel like I've never seen it all the way through, but like rewatching it this time, like all the way through, it was like a flood of memories coming back to me. It was like, oh, wow, I remember this. I remember this. I remember this. So um, it was just like real palatable, this movie for you. Like it was just like washing over you as you were watching this movie. <laughs> I guess so, kind of in a way. Yeah, it was like a hazy dream. I don't know. Uh, it, it was it was interesting. Uh, but yeah, my dad likes this movie like a lot. Um, and I actually talked to him recently. I was like, why did you, why did you ask us to do this movie? And he just says that it's it's really a fun movie. He says it's not a good movie. He recognizes it's not a good movie, but he thinks it's just really a good time. And it just reminds him of, of it reminds him of being a child because he was a huge fan of 80s hair metal. That's what he grew up with. So this kind of fits into his music taste, which, yes, he really likes that music. So anyway, do you yeah. think he would have been a big fan of Steel Dragon if that was if that was a real band? I think so. I think so. I mean, it is based off a real band. That is Judas is. Priest. Um, this is based off a true story, which I put in big, big quotations. That's based off it of is a, based. <laughs> yeah, Rockstar is based. <laughs> no. Um, it's based off of Chris Izzy Cole, who was in a Judas Priest uh cover band or tribute band. And um, he actually got to be the singer with the band. Um, but isn't I don't think that's his actual name. Is that his actual name? No, it's not. I'm so <laughs> stupid. I, that's, <laughs> that's the, the name of Mark Wahlberg. I may, I, okay, yeah. No, it's Tim Ripper Owens. It's Ripper, which is a much better name. Uh, but the only thing is, is this oh, year, like New York Ripper? Remember that? Yeah, he loves New York Ripper. He loves Donald yeah, Duck voices right, yeah. and stuff like that. Uh, that's how he sings. That's how he trains his voice. He talks that's like why Donald they, they, Duck. They picked him because he was saying he sang like that. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> But no, I guess that story, the real life story has like absolutely nothing to do with this movie. They changed like everything, even the decade it's set in because he became the singer for Judas Priest in the 90s. And this is set completely in the 80s. Um, and well, I guess until its finale. Uh, well, even then, does it give a year for like the last scenes of the movie? I don't remember it giving a year but it's, it's kind of moving obvious. into grunge yeah but it's very obviously the 90s yeah it's like moved on um but anyway you know that he is actually um god what do you call it disown this movie he's like no 
I don't I don't think he's I don't think he's ever seen it either. <laughs> Judas Priest and him have both said like this is not accurate at all. Um, they didn't do it with our permission because I guess they they were like consultants on the movie mm-hmm. at one point, and I guess the producers and director and writer were like, yeah, how about we add some like sex and drugs in there? And they're like, well okay but that didn't really happen though. they're like yeah let, let us handle your story okay buddy exactly sounds like hollywood yeah and they made it into just like a music biopic all the building blocks of making one of these movies um and it makes you wonder because brad pitt was originally in the main role and it makes you wonder why he dropped out um but what, what was brad pitt doing in 2001 he just he Oceans? just came off the that's yeah, he was actually you're right. That's probably the better pick for his career. <laughs> um, we'll see. Well, who knows? Yeah, who knows? Yeah, we're thinking of this in 2001 terms. You know, Mark Wahlberg's off of Boogie Nights, and I I love him as an actor, and I'm excited to see where he goes. As a... it's so Rockstar came out, and it was actually a very mixed movie. Um, I actually thought this movie was received a lot worse. I thought it got horrible reviews. I thought people hated this thing, but it was actually pretty average. But it was a box office bomb. It cost $57 million and only made $19 million. And for real, do you think, because this was the weekend before 9-11, that that could have heavily affected its box office? To be fair, it could have. I really, I really, I think that's a, another part of the story. I, to this. I think that's, I think, I think that could legitimately be a fair point yeah um but who knows i mean watching this movie uh Wait, it is what well we should i i'm gonna look now because i want to see what the box office was like for like the next week maybe oh yeah right like, what That's was the it. number one, like out. like like what was the number one movie the musketeer was the musketeer the, what the hell the hell is that was that a movie <laughs> in our theaters? I don't know. I don't even know what that movie is. Number number one for September. I guess it's going by the day. Like is it, like the number one was The Musketeer, and then American Pie two, <laughs> <laughs> Captain Corelli's Mandolin. Maybe this is taken into account like international too. Yeah, I don't what? know. What? What? <laughs> yeah. How come Box Office Mojo doesn't have like a good like way to look at this by weekend? Like it's like, oh yeah, you want no wait, there we go. Full week, September seventh. Yeah, the Musketeer. No, that was a universal movie. Oh, well. Captain Corelli's mandolin. Wow, what a classic. <laughs> what were we watching? <laughs> good lord. Rockstar yeah. was number not entered the box office at number four. Gotcha. Well, I'm, I'm, I took a look. Um, oh, did you get to see the next week? Because I did get to see the night the next week. Uh, next week, Rockstar dropped down to number nine. Uh, the number one movie at the box office that week was the movie Hardball. The one with oh, uh, the Keanu, Keanu Reeves. Reeves. <laughs> that movie yeah, comes the, up every once in a while. <laughs> the movie my dad and I walked out of. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, interesting. And like, uh, uh, I bet you the box office numbers were not great on either of those or any of those movies. I uh, did 11 million for that week for That's Hardball. Like, it's not bad for Hardball for a movie. Interesting. Wow. Well, what a great lesson. History. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, moving back to Rockstar, um, it's about Mark Wahlberg, who is in a tribute band to this fake band named steel dragon uh they sound nothing like judas priest they sound like you know they sound like 80s rock i, I think they're supposed to be metalish, but like like kind of like van halen kind of yeah kind of like that yeah or kit like kiss maybe yeah i don't really like i can't pin it down the music is very cheesy to me honestly a lot of it um honestly can I'll be very honest with you. Uh, there's not a lot of words to describe this. And I hate using this word on a podcast, but there's a lot of moments in this that are really cringy. 
Oh. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going to say it's like hard to watch. There's a scene very early because it's showing how Mark Wahlberg can sing. You know, he's a really powerful singer. And there's that scene where um, they're in the church choir singing Hallelujah. And he just like rips off like a Hallelujah that's so high pitched and just loud. And I'm just, it was embarrassing to watch. There was something yeah. about it. <laughs> Well, and he's like standing around there, like he's like, yeah, I totally nailed that. Like yeah. well, he's looking proud awesome. of himself. <laughs> yeah, and his his girlfriend is uh, played by Jennifer Aniston, and she's impressed. She's like, wow, that was awesome. <laughs> there are so many unintentionally funny moments in this movie. Like <laughs> really I, I really felt like you know this movie reminded me a lot of the movie like Walk Hard. Uh, it did. Yeah. No, I get. It's like so formula like, like it's so weird Go ahead. like it yeah it's like it was trying to do like a satire biopic movie like before but it but it's not like this it's not like they're, <laughs> it, they're trying really hard to make a serious like you know uh rags to riches story or something and it's oh, like man. like they almost go for like the same beat for be like it's there's so many like just cliche moments in here. Really? It's like full of them. But no, I agree. This movie had me laughing the whole time, but probably not for the correct reasons. It's um, it's honestly, I was really surprised by this one because, uh, you know, part of me was like, I don't know about this one picking it because it, it, it feels modern or I was thought it would be modern. But no, 2001 was a completely, completely different era at the movies. And I, I do think like this is, a very campy movie in a way it's like it, i don't know it's very funny um just because it fits into like this is what a movie like this needs to be and this is what we're gonna do we're gonna follow the beats and you know exactly where we're gonna go <laughs> i thought for a couple of times like they were trying to be like a total comedy but i'm I like I, i'm like but then by the end i'm like no i don't i don't think so i think i i think they thought they were being earnest with I think, this. I think they, I think so. I mean, it definitely takes times to make jokes, but just like any of these movies, they, you know, it's make it's making jokes like that. Um, well, I mean, like one, they did the joke from like Wayne's World, where like a uh, Mark Wahlberg, you know, he's he's in the tribute band, like you said, and they kick him out of the tribute band because he's taking it way too seriously. Mm -hmm. and it's like you gotta go like we want to we actually want to play like original songs and mark Wahlberg does like the all right fine i'm leaving he's like you know if i leave that's it no more <laughs> like and he's like okay and it's, so they're doing like the wayne's world thing it's like i'm leaving good all right i'm gone bye all right i'm gone <laughs> i'm i'm, I'm out of here mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. like they do that scene and then like 20 minutes later they do the exact same scene again <laughs> but that's supposed with... to be like a joke right I, that's I gotta be a joke right that's, yeah but i, I don't because it, it, it was fun it exactly mirrors it because he goes to meet the real band and they're kicking their lead singer out of the band to get him in there um and yeah like he's like doing he's but this scarf is mine and he takes the scarf out, out of like you know doing the exact same thing yeah, this is my mic stand. I'm taking the mic stand home. <laughs> yeah, uh, but it like gains like seriousness because Jennifer Aniston's about to leave and she's the band manager. And like, they're like, oh, you can be our manager. And she's like, well, you know, I stick where the talent is and the talent just walked right out of the door. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's so bad. But like, it, it's interesting. It's kind of fun to watch. Um, yeah, and I mean, they perform in the band together. Oh, Timothy Oliphant is um, one of the band members uh, who's like, seems like an a-hole, but later in the movie, they become friends again. So yeah, well, he actually looks kind of proud that he got to be in Steel Dragon. Well, I mean, like, I I was really kind of confused at first of what the, like, the moral of the story was going to be okay, beforehand, yeah. because... The whole time, you know, he wants to be in this tribute band, a cover band, mm -hmm. and they everyone tells him, like, why do you want to be in a tribute band? Like, why do you want to pretend to be someone else so bad? Wouldn't you rather be yourself? Mm -hmm. And, like, it, then if you fail, at least you failed, like, trying to be yourself and not trying to be somebody else. And it's like, no, you don't understand. Like, this is what I want to do. Like, 
<laughs> but yeah, this is what I want to do to the point where he's like piercing his nipple <laughs> because the dude yeah. pierced his nipple. And ba- yeah, and then it, it comes out later that the lead singer was gay. And it's like, you don't think I just pierce these because, you know, I love women so much, right? Like- <laughs> yeah, and it's like, oh yeah, only gay men pierce their nipples. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then like oh, one of the songs he wrote was about another man stand up and shout, which is like one of the big songs in this movie. Um, I guess that's about another man. And I, I don't know. I guess that's supposed to be a shock. Um, yeah, well, because he was like, he looks stunned. He's like, huh? Like, You're gay? Like, like, <laughs> like his whole life changed there. Like, I was trying to be you. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Um. But but yeah, so th- that's kind of how it goes. Just almost randomly gets a call from the band, right? And then he auditions. And he's a part of the band very very quickly, very quick. very very quickly and. Mm-hmm. At first, I was like, well, how did they hear about this guy? Because, I mean, you know, this is not like today where you can just whip out your phone and just start recording Mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. But they were like, oh, yeah, we just brought in this tape that these two girls sent in. You know, it's just like these two random women that he met at one of the parties or whatever. Mm -hmm. And they like wave. Yeah, but they have like a perfect camera angle where it's like shot like a movie and like, <laughs> perfect hey, sound where, too. Because you know, like, get this tape. Because you know, recording in a concert and like the concert they're recording at is like what at a steel foundry. Uh, I yeah. don't think you're gonna get great audio out of that. Yeah, no. Um, eh. But but yeah, you're right. He, he joins the band, and here's what I thought was gonna happen. Like this movie always subverts my expectations where because. <laughs> I uh they do like a thing where they're having a press conference and you know the other members of the band are British. Yes. And and they go for like the thing where you know they ask Chris and they're like, no, no, his name's Izzy. Mm-hmm. And they're like, oh, so where did you learn to sing like that? He's like, Oh, you know, uh, my my choir teacher, and then they're like, "Oh no, he loves to eat a lot of," <laughs> and they're like, "Oh yeah, I love it. I eat tons of it." But he says it like in a British accent. He's like, yeah. "I love it. I love I, it. I I can't get enough of the stuff." Yeah, like, I thought I thought they were gonna make him like, "Oh yeah, we found a British man," but later he just drops the accent. Well, that's what I thought. I thought it was gonna go like a whole like you know he's from England, and then they're gonna come out that he was not British and he's a big fraud or something uh-huh. like that. And nope. that never gets brought up again. No, that's like the only scene he does, like the British accent. Uh, except, well, no, I think he does it again when he's like in the mirror and he just and keeps the mirror, saying, he's like, it's like, I can't get enough of stuff. I love that. That's I all I do. Eat, I night eat. and day. <laughs> night and day. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which is so like weird because that's just like the scene in Boogie Nights where he's like, and he's like, I I'm going to or whatever. I, I thought the same thing. I was like, uh-huh. oh, what? Because I, I, I said that. I was like, this is. This is if Dirk Diggler took like <laughs> was I, a rock like, star. Yeah, wanted to become like a rock star instead. Hey, no, yeah, it, it's kind of like that, right? Um, and maybe just like a lot more cliche. Uh, because you know, it goes downhill. He tries his best to be good to his girlfriend, Jennifer Aniston. Um, but you know, it's just not working out. Her life on the road is like pretty miserable because she hates all the other wives and it's pretty much like the boys they go on the tour bus and they sleep with the women and we get all the money which she's not about well i mean when they first arrive though i mean you know she does get like a hard time and they do meet uh i think her name was monica i want to say or what was her or, no no uh, uh tanya 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 that's, that's right tanya yeah yeah because she and... says tonya <laughs> It, yeah, is I are no, she said, are you, are you Tanya? Tanya, <laughs> yeah. And it's like, no, I'm Tanya. And <laughs> but you know, like she kind of you kind of make it up like you know, she's this real seductive type of woman and everything. And then of course, you know, like like the very first night they're there, they have like a wild sex party. Yes. And yeah. they're like, and like it's clear like Jennifer Anderson, Mark Wahlberg, like they both slept with different people that night and they don't mm-hmm. even like realize that they all have they all have hangovers and then the next night or the next morning <laughs> mark Wahlberg stumbles in on tanya like 
standing and peeing. Like, <laughs> yeah, what are we seeing? I'm like, <laughs> and it's like he's like <sighs> he just starts. Yeah, does like the whole like gasp and like it's like, <gasps> like <laughs> and, and I'm like, oh okay, like. <laughs> Yeah, is this going to play a factor I, later? No. No, it's just a scene. And what an interesting scene, too, because, you know, you think it would do the whole, like, cheating subplot where he's like, oh, no, I slept with another woman. But no, they both sleep with different people. And then at the end of the scene, they're like, I don't want to talk about it. And they just don't bring it up again. It's like, it's like the scenes there just to be like, oh, yeah, there's sex and drugs. But, like, this brought no stakes, really, except he slept with uh, Tanya. <laughs> That's it really yeah, it did. interesting yeah it's like that one wild night and they're just like oh well i guess that's just how it is on the road like this stuff happens all the mm-hmm. time it, it, exactly um but eventually she does leave because she's not into it and that's when mark Wahlberg starts to get a little wild that's when like the music biopic really sets in, it settles in it's sex drugs and rock and roll he rides a motorcycle down a hotel hallway what was the deal with him riding the batmobile like there's multiple I, scenes with him riding the batmobile i loved the scene where he's racing the batmobile not like it's a good scene more it, like a like i can't believe they put that in the movie it, it, and he's racing the car from magnum pi mm-hmm. yeah and they they're drag racing it's full of like the like um god the camera's like hazy and it's like spinning and like moving around it's the cinematography there is so weird i didn't understand that i was like why is there multiple scenes with the batmobile i don't know because the director or whatever uh stephen herrick was just like uh i got access to the batmobile let's just put it in the movie i guess i guess they're trying to say like you know he bought the batmobile yeah, like he was just like wasting that much money. And this is after he has a talk with somebody who's just like his whole lesson was like, oh, yeah, women want to sleep with you and men want to be you because women want to sleep with you. Uh, and that's like his convincing like, oh, maybe I should have sex with everybody. Yeah, like, man, man who cares about me and my girl, my long term yeah, girlfriend? Because they didn't break up. They just like walk. They parted ways because she couldn't be there and she's like he's like sleeping with somebody and of course she comes back well no she doesn't come back he visits where she lives Um, and sleeps in her home city (laughs) well yeah she was like because they made a pact because she said okay i'm gonna go back to portland Mm -hmm. and he's like okay well when i'm in portland we can we can see each other she's like okay Mm -hmm. fine we can do that Mm -hmm. and then (laughs) he goes they're partying in a hotel and you see Jennifer Aniston pull up and he's like, he's like, what are you doing here? I thought you were in Portland. It's like, mm-hmm. like Chris, this is Portland. <laughs> it's like, oh, what? Like, no, you were, but it, it, he was supposed to remind me. And he, <laughs> yeah. So it, it, and, it's, um, and then he's, he keeps saying multiple times, like, well, let's just go to Portland together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and, oh, and, uh, then he starts like, it's very obvious he's like drunk or high or whatever. And yes. He's very clearly like, he's like, no, oh, you call me crazy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You have to call me that. Um, yeah. So I, I guess we, we did, we haven't talked about the performances, but this movie is filled with performances with Mark Wahlberg singing, singing in quotations. Uh, how'd you feel about the music? Was this something that you're going to Spotify, throwing it on your playlist? Uh, it, it's so generic. It I is. Mean, it's, it's like it's, literally like Hollywood. We got to write a song for a movie. It, it just, it complete background noise music. It really is. It's um, like music you'd hear like in a convenience store. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. <laughs> Walking in the Seven Eleven, and you're hearing this. That's so funny. I'm, uh, but but yes, no, I'm not. I I don't love it. I've heard it a lot. My dad, he has this like soundtrack on his Spotify. He loves it. I guess it's not really, not really for me. Um, but anyway, as we move on through the movie, he soon learns that you know what? Well, actually, it's not him. He gets told by uh, what's his name? Mats, uh, Mats, yeah, but the the actor's name. Oh, 
Peter Pettigrew from her. Yeah, yeah, you, you know, yeah, Peter Pettigrew. Uh, <laughs> whatever, yeah, Peter Pettigrew. I will call him that. Uh, <laughs> Timothy Spall. Um, yeah. <laughs> he, yeah, he's like the band manager, and he's like the one who gives him the talk of like, well, you know, go ahead. No, yeah, I thought he was going to be like the scummy manager that was going to be like, because at he, first he kind of was. Yeah, because he's like, oh, yeah, you know, you can get backstage if you give me a blowjob or whatever. And it's like, uh, I don't know. He's like gross, but then he ends up being like the, the lesson giver. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, because he's just like, I don't, I didn't even get the story because he's like, you know, life was passing me by and I, I went outside and I took a piss and i mean uh the, I, I i had no clue what he was talking about i didn't either and uh yeah that that was it and then that, he, then that's how he leaves he gets off the state he lets well, a fan oh go ahead well, yeah no i wanted you to describe that scene yeah so he's out there performing and he gets a fan up on stage uh, who loves mark Wahlberg, and then they're singing together and he's just like you know what you love this so much you get to be the lead singer and he says, I got to take a piss. And he walks off stage and he ends his career. It's such a weird moment because they like you think like the band would be like, um, hello. Like, <laughs> what? But like, no, they're, they're still rocking out there. <laughs> they're fine with it. They're just like, hey, as long as we got somebody that sounds kind of like Bobby Beers, we're, we're, we're OK <laughs> with it. And and mm. uh yeah, because I mean that's that's just how it ends. Like they're just like totally content with him playing this fan and the band. Yeah, exactly. Which is such a weird concept in the first place. I mean, it happened, so you know it's real. But then to just be like, oh yeah, we're gonna give it to some other fan too. Uh, oh, oh, go ahead, go ahead. No, you go ahead. No, sorry, mine was completely unrelated to the movie. I no, but I was thinking Mark Wahlberg's in another movie where a fan gets to like do a big thing uh invincible where he's like the eagles fan and he gets to play oh, yeah. off the team weird he's in two of these movies but go, well, go ahead well yeah at the end of the movie it like at the he leaves and he gets off like a, a truck drops him off mm -hmm. and you know he's got like the whole like he's got his knapsack with his guitar and everything mm -hmm. Because the whole reason he leaves the band is because, you know, he wants to actually finally produce original music. And I'm just like, yeah. wait a minute. You had like no aspirations. Like, yeah, like at I, first. And then it's like, now you want to now you care about original songs. Yeah, maybe it would make more sense if like at the beginning of the movie is like, no, but this is like what works for me. And I don't really trust myself. And you only get that in one scene because he wrote right. a song for Jennifer Aniston's birthday. But like it sounded like he was a kid when he wrote that, so like I, I don't know. It doesn't seem like the aspirations were there, right? But so I mean, he's in this band this whole time. He obviously has money. He obviously got rich. He yes. right, like yeah, he oh, had yeah. the he, he had the Batmobile, but then he had a freaking truck drop him off like he was hitchhiking. I didn't. I'm like, huh? Like oh, he he had, he had to give it all back. It was like, yeah, oh, hey, buddy, it, if you hey. quit the band, all the money's back to us. All the, oh, yeah, you gotta give us every cent back. Yeah, unless maybe he blew it all because he bought the Batmobile and stuff. I, I don't know. I mean, but he, like, they made it seem like he was broke, broke. And then yeah. they, like we kind of alluded to, the movie jumps forward in time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's obviously the 90s. They're all having, like, sweaters with t-shirts uh -huh. underneath and they're at a and... coffee shop i don't know there's something about it and i'm like again so i'm like okay so he was in this band for years i think like steel dragon because yeah was, it seemed I... like they were like best friends for a long time because i think he started i want to say it was like 85 in the movies time i think i think so i think something like that so i think he was at least there for a couple of years i want to say but anyway like He's just playing in this little small coffee shop. And I'm like, <laughs> you'd think like he'd be a little more popular at this Ex point. Exactly. <laughs> like, oh, wow. This guy who was a fan broke off from Steel Dragon and he's doing solo work. That's not that hard to promote. That's happened before. He, d he doesn't have to play at like a coffee shop. Now it's like making him seem like he's like purely independent, like no fame and just like, yeah, I'm making music for you. He 
it could work, even if it's a completely different genre, which it is. He's playing like acoustic and he's not even singing in the same way. <laughs> no, and just very odd. And I'm, and I'm, I like, I don't know what other sign because obviously he wrote original songs for Steel Dragon. So obviously they were songs that would probably sound like a Steel Dragon song. Mm-hmm. And, but then, you know, he's, so is he that versatile as a songwriter that he's just like, oh, I can write hair metal, acoustics, you know, just whatever you need. Yeah, you know, just... uh, yeah, a jack of all trades in the music world. <laughs> um, no, I I agree. It's definitely a very interesting end, and it ends like La La Land because Jennifer Aniston walks in and sees sees him. Except things work out in this one. But she has a flash <laughs> forward, and, and it's all. Yeah. It's like a dance number, and you know. um, but yeah, I mean that that that's rock star in a nutshell. Um, what a movie! It's you know I can't step away from it, and I I, I have to be like my dad. I'm not that I love it and will watch it again, but like it is a fun movie. Like it's a bad movie. Like it's a it's a it's a bad movie. But did I have a good time watching it? Yeah, it was it was silly. It's pretty bad. It's pretty bad but like you said it's very entertaining and yes yes. i because i was just i just i couldn't believe like this is what they made like that they just turned in a completely by the books by like (laughs) rise to fame movie and with all the tropes there but yeah it just it reminded me so much of like like I said, the other satires of this movie. I'm like, oh no, like this, they made the they made the movie. Like, yeah, exactly. Like walk hard, the, the people that made that, this is like in their movies that they went and watched. And I was like, yep, okay, we can just do this. Yeah, very odd. And I mean, it, they even do like the whole, like, you know, the, in walk hard, they do like the drug thing where it's like, hey, you want to come in and have some drugs with us? And it's like, okay. And then they even <laughs> do that scene in this movie where it's like, you want some drugs and at first he's like no i'm good and then but then yeah of course he does do drugs of course um but yeah uh do you recommend it though that is the question uh i mean as a good movie no i don't think i don't think i don't think i would but i will say i mean if you're looking for a so bad it's good movie i I would recommend it yeah, same here. Yeah, I don't recommend it like as like a, oh you sh- you should go out and see this. It's actually like a hidden gem now, um, but it is a kind. It, it it's a, exactly a so bad it's good movie. You're gonna have fun. It's a fun movie just to laugh with a little bit. Um, it's crazy that Mark Wahlberg was in a bad movie um, after Boogie Nights. Hopefully he goes up from here. Maybe this is just a stumbling block. I I don't think he'll be in another bad movie after this. I don't think so. I heard about this Arthur the King movie. I'm excited for that one. But that does wrap it up for Rockstar. But Ryan, what are we going to be talking about on Thursday? Well, Nathan, like I said, it's it's prom season at mm-hmm. that this time again. And um, we're going to go to prom again. And uh, this time we're mm-hmm. going to go have a prom in Canada, Nathan. I mean, there's nothing I like better than a Canadian prom. They do it a lot different. They do very different up there, I've heard. Yeah, you know, instead of a corsage, it's, you know, (laughs) like some some poutine or something. I mean, I don't. That does sound nice. (laughs) They go get some poutine at the at the prom. That's Mm -hmm. what that's that's what they're all there for. Yeah, and yeah. Rick Rick Moranis, also, you know, like he's just always there as like the, you know, he, he's announcing the winners and stuff. You know, he, he's just like that. He's a nice guy. Yeah, mm-hmm. that definitely. A. So, a mm-hmm. yeah. Well, if you do want to watch this movie, it is a uh, prom night two. Hello, Mary Lou, or excuse me, Hello, Mary Lou, prom night two. <laughs> yeah, the so, like weirder way around. <laughs> yeah, the the perfect way is to do a sequel <laughs> subtitle for this. Thing. So uh, you can watch that over on Tubi for free right now. Awesome. Well, I'm excited to watch that. But if you want to email us any recommendations, email us at drive and double feature podcast and gmail.com. You can tweet at us over at DIDF pod. You can also watch, watch us, listen to us, whatever you want to do over on YouTube and uh, Amazon. Awesome. But until next time. Till next time. Till next time.